In this video, I'll discuss portfolio objectives and how those objectives are achieved. Then, we'll go through and we'll calculate portfolio returns. We'll then discuss how you actually calculate portfolio weights. And then finally, I'll mention portfolio volatility and how it's calculated. There are many ways to manage a portfolio. Some fund managers choose to hold the majority stake or a large minority stake in a few firms, while others choose to diversify their portfolio across many securities. And there's merits to both methods. However, in this section, I'll focus on two specific approaches to portfolio management. Let's start with the traditional approach. With the traditional approach to portfolio management, the goal is to identify securities that allow you to balance a portfolio across industries. While you're diversifying your portfolio, you might overweight securities that are well known, like the stocks of firms listed on the New York Stock Exchange. You might also invest in stocks you believe are less risky. Historically, managers that follow this strategy tend to hold more blue chip stocks as well as stocks that appear more regularly in the popular press. Obviously, with this method, there are many ways to select stocks to add to your portfolio. This traditional approach to portfolio management is still popular, although other methods that rely on data analysis have taken away funds from these institutional investors in the last several decades. The portfolio management strategy we'll spend the most time on in this section follows the modern portfolio theory. The big difference between the traditional approach and that of the modern portfolio theory is that modern portfolio theory optimizes the sharp ratio of your portfolio based on expected returns and standard deviations of securities. In my last video, I reminded you how to calculate correlation and covariance because we're going to use those formulas to optimize a portfolio using modern portfolio theory techniques. The traditional approach to portfolio management relies on more qualitative metrics and often leads portfolio managers to purchase securities based on subjective biases rather than a purely quantitative approach. Let's look at a portfolio in the real world that's been constructed using a more traditional approach. Here's an example of a portfolio that was likely developed using a traditional approach to investing. This Growth Fund of America is a mutual fund that holds securities across 10 of the 11 sectors of the U.S. economy at the time I collected this data. The fund's management chooses to underweight and overweight various sectors of the economy, and management of this fund will determine which sectors to hold based on security analysis. Notice here that the fund has not invested any funds under management in the utility sector. This is likely because the fund manager believes that assets in this sector are overvalued, while assets in the consumer cyclical sector up here are undervalued. Now let's talk about the objectives of portfolios. The objective tells investors what goals the fund manager is hoping to achieve. Different funds will have different objectives. As far as funds that focus on equity are concerned, there are two broad objectives capital appreciation, and accumulating income. The objective will always be provided in the fund's prospectus. In this example, Vanguard's Explorer Value Fund is focused on capital appreciation and will hold securities that help achieve that objective. In this next example, Vanguard's Equity Income Fund has an objective of both income accumulation and capital accumulation. Now, regardless of the objective, we need some way to determine whether the fund's portfolio is efficient. Efficient portfolios offer investors a high return for a small amount of risk or volatility. Because of this, we often measure fund efficiency using the Sharpe Ratio. To remind you, the Sharpe Ratio is the return on a security or portfolio minus the risk-free rate, all divided by the standard deviation of that portfolio or security. The modern portfolio theory seeks to optimize or maximize this Sharpe ratio by adjusting the weights of the assets in the portfolio. Now let's talk about how you calculate the return on your portfolio. Hopefully this should be a bit of a review for you, but we calculate the return on a portfolio by summing up the return of each asset in the portfolio multiplied by the weight of that asset in the portfolio. 
In other words, we're just taking the weight of each security multiplied by the return on that security in the period and summing up all of those weights times returns. That'll give us this RP, or the return on our portfolio. We calculate our portfolio weights by identifying the value of an asset in our portfolio at the beginning of the period and dividing that value by the total value of the portfolio. For example, let's say that you start with a portfolio consisting of $5,000 in Apple stock and $10,000 in Google stock. Your portfolio weights would be, well, you have $5,000 in Apple stock, and we're dividing that by the total value of your portfolio, so your Apple stock of $5,000 and your Google stock worth $10,000. Your weight of Apple would be 0.33, basically a third, and your weight of Google would be the remainder, just two-thirds. All right, now let's calculate the return on a portfolio that I just created a very simple example for. So in this portfolio, we have two securities. We have the Russell 2000 ETF, and we have a gold ETF, the uh, SPDR Gold Shares ETF. And we've initially allocated 4000 to the the Russell 2000 ETF and 2000 to the gold ETF and we know their returns during the year. So I'm gonna move over to Excel and show you how to calculate this. All right, so I'm over in Excel now. Let's go ahead and get the weights of these two assets first. So the first thing I wanna do is sum up the total value of my portfolio this year, and obviously that's 6,000. And then we're going to divide the value of the Russell 2000 ETF by the total value of both ETFs and do the same thing for the gold ETF. Just gold ETF divided by total value of the portfolio. So here we're finding that the Russell 2000 ETF represents two-thirds of our portfolio and the weight of the gold ETF is one-third. Next, I'll just multiply my weights times my returns and I will copy that down. And then finally, I'm going to sum up my weights times returns. And so my weighted portfolio return is 3.33%. Now for the final topic in this video, we need to go over how to calculate the variance and standard deviation of a portfolio. So the question is, how do we actually calculate the variance of a portfolio? Well. There's a couple of different ways, but we'll, I'll show you the two primary formulas uh, as simply as I can. So when you calculate the standard deviation of a two stock portfolio, a, a portfolio that only has two stocks in it, this is going, either of these is going to be your primary formula. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the weight of each security squared times its variance, and then add to that two times the weight of both securities times the covariance. And we're gonna take the square root of that to get our standard deviation. If we're trying to get our variance of our portfolio, then we're just gonna take off this uh, square root. Now, if we only have correlation, essentially what we're gonna do is, rather than just use this two times weight of stock one times weight of stock two times covariance, we're gonna take two times the weight of stock one times the weight of stock two times the standard deviation of stock one times the standard deviation of stock two times the correlation coefficient of between stocks one and two. So if you remember from our statistics review, covariance is equal to the standard deviations of both securities times the correlation. All right, let's put that to the test. So here's another example. And in this example, we have a portfolio consisting of two assets. GM and Ford stock. And we're going to calculate the arithmetic average return of both these stocks. Then we're going to calculate the portfolio return and standard deviation. And for this example, we're going to assume that we have 76% of our portfolio in Ford and 24% of our portfolio in, I'm sorry, 76% of our portfolio in GM and 24% of our portfolio in Ford. All right, here we go. And so here's our data. We have five years worth of 
return data for both of these securities. And the first thing that I want to do is calculate the average return for both GM and Ford. And so since it's an arithmetic average, I'm just going to take the average for both of these. And we know the weights of each of these securities, so 76% and 24%, or 0.76 and 0.24. So I'm going to calculate the weighted average portfolio return. And to do that, I'm just going to take my weight of GM, and I'm going to lock this in by hitting the dollar signs in front of both the letter and the number, and multiply that by GM's return in 2012. And I'm going to add to that the weight of Ford, and I'm going to lock in this cell so it doesn't move by hitting the dollar signs in front of both the letter and the number, and multiply that by the return of Ford in that year. All right, so we have the return of our port on our portfolio in 2012, and I'm going to copy that down all the way to the bottom. And, well, if I do this all the way to the bottom, we have our arithmetic average return. And we got that by simply using these, these same uh, arithmetic average returns down here at the bottom. But if we wanted to, we could just take the average return of our portfolio returns and we'd get the same thing. All right, next, we need to get our portfolio standard deviation. And to do that, what I'm going to do is over here on the right hand side, I put together a correlation matrix. And I did that by using the data analysis tool in salt uh, over here under the data tab. And so if you go to the data analysis tool, uh, you'll be able to create this correlation matrix where you can find the correlations of any random variables that you have in your data set. Uh, now, if you don't have the data analysis tool, you're going to need to add that in. And the way you add that in in Excel is by going up to File, going down to Options, going over to Add-ins, and then going over to where it says Excel Add-ins, and click Go. And then make sure really all of these are checked. So for this chapter, we're going to use the analysis tool pack. Uh, it's probably better to also have the analysis tool pack VBA checked. And then we're certainly going to use solver later on in a future video. So go ahead and make sure that you have that checked. And when you have them checked, just click OK. And if you didn't have the data analysis tool on your data tab, now you should. So if you go up to the data analysis tool and go down to correlation, you can highlight the cells that you want to run a correlation matrix on. And then we'll put labels in the first row, so just check that box. And then we'll output, we'll say right below the correlation matrix that I already had here. And I'll click OK. And now we have the exact same thing. All right, so our correlation coefficient between Ford and GM is pretty high, which is obvious given that they're in the same industry and they're subject to the same risk factors. Next, we need the standard deviations of both GM and Ford. So we're going to get the stdev.s and we'll highlight GM's returns and then we'll get the standard deviation of Ford's returns. All right, now we're ready to calculate the portfolio standard deviation. And remember, that thing is the very long formula that I just showed you here. All right, so why don't I just go ahead and copy it down here. Okay, so here's what we're going for. Let's get started. So our standard deviation of our portfolio is just equal to the square root of our first securities weight squared times 
the standard deviation of that security squared. Next, we add to that the weight of stock 2 squared times the standard deviation of our second security squared, or just the variance if you prefer. And then to that, we're going to add 2 times the weight of stock 1 times, I'm sorry, the weight of security 1 times the weight of security 2 times the standard deviation of security 1 times the standard deviation of security 2 times the correlation coefficient. We'll close our parentheses and now we have our portfolio standard deviation. In this case, our portfolio standard deviation is pretty darn low. That's impressive. All right, so there we go. You've just calculated your first portfolio standard deviation. Now, as we go forward, you'll notice that we're only optimizing portfolios that have at most three stocks in them. And there's a reason for that. I mean, I just showed you how to calculate the standard deviation of a portfolio that only contains two securities. But the reason we're going to focus on portfolios with a smaller number of securities in them is because as we increase the number of securities in our portfolio, the standard deviation of our portfolio becomes a lot more complicated. Essentially, for every new security that we add into our portfolio, we have to calculate the weight, the squared weight of that security in our portfolio times its variance, and then add to that the two times the weight of our new security times the weight of every other security in our portfolio times our st standard deviation of our new security times the standard deviation of every other security in our portfolio and then multiply that by the correlation coefficient between our new security and all the other securities. In other words, for every new security that we add in our portfolio, we're going to be adding multiple different components because every new security will be correlated with every one of our old securities. So essentially, our formula expands significantly every time we add a new security. All right, so let's recap. I mentioned the traditional approach to fund management often relies on many different metrics. However, the theory that we're going to focus on in, this, in the next several videos, the modern portfolio theory, really only forces us to optimize or maximize the Sharpe ratio of a portfolio. So it's a little simpler. Now, the return on a portfolio, I also mentioned, is the weighted average return of the securities in the portfolio. Just the weights times the returns, or the beginning weights times the returns. And then finally, I showed you how to calculate the standard deviation of a portfolio. And that requires us to estimate weights, returns, standard deviations, and then either the correlation or covariance of each security with each other security. So with that, I'm going to wrap up, and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask.